Do you get tired of typing out a word in Cricut Design Space, choosing a fancy script font, and then finding that once it's loaded, you get these great big gaps between all the letters. I know I do. It's one of the most annoying things I think about design spaces that you can't use script fonts nicely and easily just by selecting it in the text tool. So what can you do about it? Well, there are some ways that you can fix it within design space, but they're a little bit tricky. For example, you can change this box up here, which says letter space and reduce the number to move the letters closer together. However, it's a bit trial and error to get them so that they're touching and also you sometimes find that some of your letters will touch and some of them are still separate. If that's the case, you can move each letter individually by right clicking on the word and then pressing ungroup. This changes each of the letters to a separate layer. So now you can click and drag the ones that aren't touching until they are. However, this can get a little bit fiddly, especially if you're a bit wobbly with your mouse and you might end up with the words no longer lining up along the bottom, which can look a little bit messy. If you're happy with how that looks, you can select the whole word and then um, press weld down the bottom of the layers panel and that would be ready to cut. But it is a little bit messy. If I zoom in, you can see the A and the R aren't quite touching right and that H is no longer lined up along the bottom. So what can you do to make it easier and quicker to connect your script letters? There is a free website called wordmark.it which you can use to make it easier to have script fonts in Design Space. Now once you go to it, you do need to load in the browser extension if you want to use fonts that you have manually installed on your computer. So after going to wordmark.it, click on the um, browser extension button and it will give you some instructions. Now this will only work in Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge browsers. I'm using Google Chrome, so I'm going to press click here to install the extension. And this will load up this page and I can now press add to Chrome, click on add extension, and that has now been added to Chrome. Now what I'll need to do to get it to work is close Chrome, close my whole browser and then open it again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've opened Chrome again and gone to wordmark.it and this time it's going to show me all the fonts on my computer. So I can type in my name, press enter on my keyboard and now it's showing me all of the fonts on my computer that I have installed. Now this is really cool because it means you can choose what font to use really easily and you can check exactly what it is that you want to um, type. So I'm using my name, you can see I've got all of these fancy fonts on here. Now I'm just going to go back to Design Space and check the name of the font that I chose here so that I use the same one, Alex Brush. Okay, so let's have a little look for Alex Brush here. Here it is, and now you can see on this one that the letters are already joined up, so I don't need to do anything with it. Now that I've clicked on this one to select it, I can click on the top right where it says filter selected and it will just show me this one. I can then press save image. But first I'm just gonna zoom in and make it nice and big so that I can double check I'm happy. And you can see how much prettier and nicer this looks than it did in design space. Now at this point you've got two options. You can either click save as image and then that will make you sign up to wordmark.it pro which is $1.50 a month. Um, but it's billed all at one time, so $18 for 12 months. So if you're gonna be using this a lot, then I would recommend doing that because that's not a lot of money and it means you'll be able to use this all the time. However, if you don't want to um, pay, then what you can do is take a screenshot instead. So to do that on your keyboard, there's probably a print screen button. So I'm gonna go ahead and print screen that. And then you'll need to um, find a program to paste that into so that you can upload it into Design Space. I'm going to use a free website called PhotoP. So go to photop.com. And this is like a free online version of Photoshop. So I'm going to agree to the cookies and then press New Project. Now, because we've already taken the screenshot, it should automatically default the width and height to the size of your screenshot which you've taken. So you can just press create 
and then go edit at the top and press paste. We need to crop around the outside so that all we've got here is the word. So to do that, choose the crop tool, which is the fourth one down on this list on the left. If you hover over it, you can see it says crop tool. Now I've got that selected, I can click and drag around my word and then press enter on my keyboard to crop. You don't need to be completely exact because we're going to get rid of this white background in design space in a moment. So now I can go file and then export as and I'm going to choose a PNG. You'll notice that it does say SVG here, but I've tested this and it doesn't actually work as well if we save it as an SVG straight off the bat. So we're going to save it as a PNG and then um, convert it in design space into a cut file. So click on that one and then just leave everything in this box the same and press save. This will save it to your downloads folder on your computer. So now if you go back into design space, let's zoom out a bit, go into upload and then upload image. You can find that file on your computer, choose complex and then continue. Click into all of the white parts of the design to remove them. Press continue. Choose save as a cut image and then press save. You can now click on it and insert images and it will put it onto your file. So now here is the one that you've made and you can see compared to the one that we did in design space the letters are much nicer aligned. But if I zoom in and wait for it to load you might sometimes see depending on the font that you've chosen that some of the edges are a little bit jaggedy and that's because we saved it with the white background and then removed it in design space so for an even better way to do it we're going to use that free website called photop to type out the word and then save it with a transparent background and that'll give us a better quality cut image in design space okay so I still recommend using wordmark.it so that you can preview your fonts and um, see which one you want to use for the word or phrase that you're typing. However, once you've selected the font, then what I would do is go to photop.com, choose a new file by going File, New, and then it doesn't really matter what size you choose, but I'm going to go nice and big, so at least um, a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels tall. So mine by default has gone to the size of my screen, so I'm happy with that. Go into the text tool down the bottom and then click onto the um, canvas and then you can type. Now by default this is going to be really small, so I'm just going to double click my word and then in this size box along the top, let's go 200 to make it nice and big. You can move your word about by clicking on the move tool which is the top left one over here and then you can click and drag to make it even bigger and don't forget to hold shift when you're resizing it so that it all stays in proportion. If I take the shift key off you can see that you can end up squidging it which you don't want to do but by pressing that shift key it resizes everything beautifully. When you've made it big so it fills your screen nicely then hit enter on your keyboard and then that resize will be um, finalized. Okay, so to change the font, press the text tool again and click and drag over the word that you have typed. On the top left up here, you've got a drop down where you can use some fonts that Photop already has installed. Or if you want to use a custom one which you've downloaded from somewhere else, such as Defont or Creative Fabrica or Design Bundles then you'll need to load it in by um, clicking this load font button and then you'll need to find that original font file that you downloaded and upload it into Photop. You will need to do this every time you want to use the font so um, just bear that in mind and remember that you'll have to do that. Now I'm wondering if the one that I chose, Alex Brush, will already be here because it's quite a common font and it is. You see I just typed it in there so I can click that and it will load that font for me. So just like when we did it in wordmark.it, this is beautifully um, aligned. So all of my letters are touching, they're all lined up along the bottom and this is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger again, 
just so that it fills that rectangle. The bigger you do it, the better quality your cut file will be when you put it into design space. All right, so now I've got this. I want to save it with a transparent background. So over in the layers panel on the right, you've got a layer which says background and then a little eye next to it. Just like in design space, you can click the eye to hide that layer. Now I'm gonna click back onto my text layer and then go file, export as PNG. Just like I said before, it does have an option to do it as SVG, but don't click that one because it doesn't work very well for our purpose. What you want to do is choose PNG, which is the first one. And this should have a transparent background. You know if it does because you've got this checkerboard effect in the background. You don't need to change anything in this box, just click save and that'll go ahead and save it to your computer. So once more, let's go into design space. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see the difference and then go into upload and choose the file after you've clicked upload image. So this time you can see we've already got that transparent background. So when we go ahead, you can choose any of these options. So I'm gonna choose simple and then continue. You don't need to change anything on this screen and that's why this is a higher quality cut file than when we remove the white background because you're not going to get any little tiny bits of white left behind because there's no white to begin with. So I can just click continue, save as a cut image which is this one on the right. Um, I'm pretty sure they used to be the other way around so maybe design space has changed that. Uh, but anyway, make sure you choose save as a cut image and then save. Now I can insert this one and when that's loaded, doo -doo -doo, you can see this is now a perfect quality file. So I've got lovely smooth letters around everything and out of all of the three options which I've shown you, so number one was doing it straight in design space, number two was doing it in word mark and then removing the white background in design space. And number three was doing it directly in Photop and saving it as a transparent background. Out of all of those, the number three is the best quality. So you can see if I zoom in a bit and compare these two, around the bottom of the A on this one, it's got a weird kind of corner on it and it's not quite smooth. And again, around the top of the R, whereas this one underneath, it's all smooth and beautiful and ready to go ahead and cut. So I can delete those other two. Make this however big I want it to cut. So maybe six inches wide and then go ahead and make it. And this will be a beautiful cut file. All of those letters are gonna be lovely and smooth and they're all connected apart from the S obviously because that's not touching, but that is how it's supposed to be. And then I can use that on my project. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to connect your script letters in Design Space. I showed you three different ways to do it, but my favorite is definitely the third way of typing it into Photopea, saving it as a PNG with a transparent background, and then uploading into Design Space. 